Well, good afternoon, my friends. Nothing more exciting than getting home and there's something by your front door, a package from one of you guys in appreciation for my videos. I can tell you that uh, you guys are the greatest there is. I gotta show you. <laughs> and I gotta tell you that out of all my turns, all my turns, any time that I receive a package, like I received a package from Stephen Ogle before, and I never felt so much pressure as to knowing that I had to make something out of it. It had to be a success. Um, it's not like any piece that I have out in my yard and I grab it and if it's a success or I like it and I make the video, voila, you know, everybody's happy. I'm happy and you guys are happy. So there's that from my own pile. But when I receive something from a friend, I know, I know how great of a piece of wood it is. Uh, it's a piece of myrtle wood. Well, let me real quick get to the story. I received a message on Facebook, uh, a PM, saying, Al, I got some wood that I would like to ship to you. I was like, oh my God, yeah, you don't need to do that. You know, there's many, I got an abundance of wood. I mean, you know, I know there's a lot of wood turners. As honored as I am, to for anybody to think of sending me wood and proud and y you name it uh, it's just a great honor uh, you know I suggested that you know maybe some other wood turners uh, probably could use it more than me because I, I have an abundance of wood and uh, still they sent it to me with a beautiful beautiful note inside of it and uh, this was from Chuck and Linda Walker and of course Linda is the one that wrote the uh, the note DL my husband and I really enjoy watching the woodworking videos as you always do such beautiful work this is our way of uh, saying thank you the wood is green myrtle wood I have been told it cracks bad, if not roughed out soon. It's going to be roughed out very soon. I just got home from work and I might not have time to get to it today, but it will be in this video because I will do it in sections. I look forward to pictures on Facebook of what you make of it, even if it ends just being burned. That will never happen. Your videos are so hope, uh, helpful, educational, and inspiring. Thank you for sharing and posting them. Sincerely, Chuck and Linda Walker. Well, Chuck and Linda, thank you, and this one is dedicated to you. Now, also, inside, there was also this other piece of Myrtle Wood. I've never had the pleasure of turning Myrtle Wood. I've seen Carl Jacobson do quite a few pieces of myrtle wood. This one, it's not a complicated piece to think. The options are somewhat limited um, in the sense that you turn it and that's what it is. And what it is, it's a vase. It's not a vase with a lot of wings because the piece is fairly round and it has this little tear out over here which is not a big deal but I'll probably end up turning it this way to keep the bark and its natural form and I'll offset it a little bit and it will be a really pretty vase I I don't know I still like this I might do it on this end regardless I might do a little bit of surgery on it just to keep this piece maybe but with a piece like this this is where the real challenge comes in. And the first thought when I looked at this, it's like, oh my God, 
a face and I hesitated to complete it because I don't think it's a vase. I started looking at it and it started slapping me around and saying, Al, oh, it's not a vase. But I think what I see here is the beginning of a perfect, perfect stick around. <laughs> and you'll have to see it. It's going to be an amazing piece and I'm not going to waste any of this. So I will prep it in the bandsaw, do a little bit of prep on it, save a little piece of it for another project and make what this piece is asking for it to do. And it's going to be amazing. Let's get started. I believe that this has many, many options waiting for me to explore it. So the option that I see is that this base in here is already somewhat a beginning of a bowl. So I'm going to treat it as such. And it's going to be rounded off from the bottom, but these branches, these three, one, two, three, and I don't know about this one. Might have a little play in it, but if nothing else, it has the growth pattern that goes through it. That will be amazing. So I'm going to prep this up a little bit on the bandsaw, and I hope that I do it justice, because like I said, there's no piece of wood that's harder to turn than one that was a gift and you want to do something really special with it. And this was special. I gotta say, I've only had one piece of wood that was nearly as challenging as this. And that was when Stephen Ogle sent me a piece of um, pecan. Uh, and I tell you, that thing was funky, it was dry, it was hard as could be to turn and it was a challenge but not because of those characteristics but because i knew i had to produce something nice with it and i hope that in this case i do this beautiful piece of wood okay well i'm back and i've got it mounted into the lathe and basically i cut all off a little bit cleaned up this knob so I could get my live center in and I got it on a spur drive on the back side. Now it's relatively balanced. I'm not going to run it at uh, uh, high speed but I need to see what starts developing with this as I start rounding this over to come up maybe to the stop edge over here and I will have to stop it depending on what's going on in this area. Okay, lathe is going at uh, 530 RPMs and it's time to go in there and start setting up for my tenon and start doing a little bit of shaping on this. the center a little bit on a spur drive. No, on a spur drive I'm still there. Yeah, I lost it a little bit on the uh, life center. It started wobbling a little bit more. Well, I 
can tell you right now, Myrtlewood has uh, some interesting smell to it. And uh, the cutting is really, really nice. It's got a spicy smell to it, if that makes any sense. Okay, so what it looks like right now is most of this will only be visible as far as the wood character until I start hitting this. Uh, and once I start digging up the inside, it will come up fairly low. So I want to keep the base pretty deep on this area. So I don't want to take too much off here because it's going to make a huge play as to what's happening on the inside. So I don't end up with a very low spot over here. So got a little bit more to go before I start hitting this one. But like I said, not going to take much more from here. Basically just going to get to the bare wood a little bit. I might even leave a little bit of the bark inclusion, but the bark will definitely be going up through this area. have the uh, very basic shape I'm gonna go over here from the outside and get rid of this stub out that's really gonna be coming out anyway so it doesn't come off in one chunk and it's a little bit safer for me I'm going to take it from the outside and it will work on these areas and I'll be already pretty close to this area right here I think this is going to be an exciting piece for my uh, tenant. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys can already see it, but I sure can. This is going to be an amazing, amazing piece. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A little bit more to take off. Got to get rid of this piece right here. Got to make sure that I'm still in there fairly tight. Because as you start turning, yeah, things start loosening up on you, so be careful. Check it up once in a while.
so I'm finishing my tenon because I want to get this thing as secure as I can reverse it and I will still be able to shape it a little bit with it mounted properly on my chuck so back this off take it off from the spur drive knock off this little tab over here and uh, that will be fine so the first thing I'm gonna start doing is continuing up with this edge right here uh, to this up a little bit I can come either way from this way or from the back side I'm gonna take it out from this and start cleaning up the inside slightly but before I go too crazy I'm going to run my life center in there always check your tool rest before you start up your lid. it's green it's uh it's got like a spice to it and it's burning my nose a little bit uh, making me sneeze so time to put the air respirator on for this one I'm not sure of any uh, strong smells to this Okay, I know this is going to be an amazing piece. Time to... I have... Uh, I have a real problem wearing uh, these things. So, for those of you who think that I just ignore safety, I gag with uh, putting this on. Even though this is burning my nose, um, I can put up with the burning of the nose and I cannot put up with the uh, instant uh, gagging that I get out of this so this will be off to the side and I'll uh, do what I can and maybe walk away from it occasionally depending on how it's going I'm going to be a little aggressive with this at this time and get this chunk off that's making me really off balance and uh, come up and clear up that up fairly quick so I should be able to speed it up and uh, uh, stop the shaking on this within five minutes time
That's much better. Lower this down a little bit. It's too high so I can get to the middle and work it from inside out. That is good. You know, I just feel, I know I'm not being accurate, but I feel for the, the spacing that I feel that's between my, my two hands, and that's how I feel the piece, not with a metal gauge uh, of any sort. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I trust the feel uh, and the touch of my hands more than I do a piece of uh, metal and a piece of metal. If I'm in a blind spot and I can't reach inside, then absolutely. But for something like this, I'm not looking for precision in the thickness overall. I am looking for feel of the thickness overall, if that makes any sense. You know, the, uh, like I said before, the three hardest pieces that I've ever had to turn had to have been this one, the piece that uh, Stephen Ogle sent me, and the beautiful burl that also um, James Walt. Uh, brought me uh, from Canada to my door um, and and like I said uh, not because of the wood but because the fact that it's a gift and when it's a gift you feel that pressure that otherwise you don't uh, because if it's just a piece of wood you get from your wood pile if it turns out nice, which generally they do, uh, well, sometimes they do, uh, but if they don't, uh, you know, n not a great loss. I mean, I do feel a loss, uh, you know, my time and disappointment, uh, whatever, but it's no big deal. And, uh, you know, but with a piece like this, you know, you, you have a certain amount of pressure you know to make it uh, to do it justice um, you know it's expected uh, so therefore it uh, just sets a different a different thing but I gotta tell you it's satisfying when you do go through the process and it's working out nice for you So, but anyway, on this case, for the finish, I'm going to uh, apply a couple of coats of spray-on lacquer. And the lacquer will still soak in, and it's not going to give me a high gloss, but it will give me a satin finish.
and that my friends is the finished piece all I have to do is turn it over and clean up the foot and uh, maintain the whole overall of the bowl it was a little bit of challenge coming up with the best layout for the piece I hope that I gave it the best possible layout but you know layouts is something that I did it this way but if I had done it a different way it would have been a different effect and it would have probably looked okay too and we would have always been wondering on what was actually the best effect is this it is it uh, in another orientation did uh, you know but we never know all we can do is guess or uh, think I mean I have a good visual on I had a good visual on where it was going uh, from the beginning so I think it ended up pretty much what I envisioned I think the vision that I had to do it in this orientation was a better alternative than what I could visualize on any other way so I feel that I did the uh, best uh, possible that I could with this piece running a little bit of super fine or ultra fine steel wool Well, I must say, this is a huge relief, a relief that I was able to pull it off on what I was envisioning. And uh, kept a lot of bark going through this whole area here. The drawback is that it made this branch that was coming out over here a little bit thinner than I normally would want to. Um, I got so concentrated on the insides, turning it, knowing I wanted to keep this, but forgetting that this in fact had a little bit of a concave and therefore making this transition here a little bit thinner. I could have turned this down a little bit more and still maintain the bark, but not have this concave over here and then I would have had that little bit of a, a, a dilemma with that. Is it in danger? No, it's not in danger, but it's a flaw that I feel I could have avoided. But uh, peace has a nice look and a nice feel to it. Myrtle wood, very interesting wood grain, beautiful wood grain, very, very easy cutting wood, uh, like butter. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of cutting many woods as nice as this was. The bottom really is probably the nicest of the features um, because it shows up exactly what was existing on the tree to this piece almost so I feel that it's a worthy piece uh, piece to put up amongst my other ones hope you like it Give me a thumbs up and uh, share with your friends with another one.
probably like this one. Besides, I got the other piece of this myrtle wood that is going to make a couple of pieces. I got the base from this that's going to make another piece. I have an idea that from the mushroom bowl that I was thinking of and there was a comet on there. It's like, whoa, well, you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking of making this and it's like, oh my God, like it took it out of my head. Great, great job. I'll wait for you to, to, to do it. Uh, and give you know and do it after you and of course give you the credit for it it's like oh well i got so many things going on i don't have the right piece of wood go ahead i want to see you doing it so i i know that i want to make that piece and to tell you the truth i've been looking i've gone outside and looked at my wood pile it's like oh my god nothing calls out to me what's the matter with me um so I'm going to, to, to have to look for the piece that's going, that's given me that call and mix it with others because I don't have a one single piece that I can make it all out of. Uh, so it will be a mixed wood match. Um, you'll have to come back someday and see that. And it's going to probably happen this weekend. Um, Maybe tomorrow I will work on that as well. Thanks again. See you soon.